On today's show, the Houston Rockets hiring the rest of Steven Silas's assistant coaching staff. We've got three names that we're going to talk about on today's show being introduced to Steven Silas's coaching staff for this upcoming season. Also, the Houston Rockets unveiling their summer league roster. We'll take a quick look at that as well as, hey, the official numbers for Jabari Smith Jr., Tari Eason, and Ty Ty Washington. We'll see how off base I was in my predictions and just some quick thoughts on the numbers that those three Chose all of that and more coming up right here at Locked on Rockets. This is Mission Control Houston. Ignition sequence start. The Houston Rockets select Jalen Green and Jabari Smith Jr. T minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. Every time I step on that floor, I'm coming. You get somebody who's going to come in with a chip on their shoulder, somebody who's going to come, come in and compete from day one. Six, five, four, three. Two, one, zero. What's up and welcome to another edition of Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. As always, I'm your host, Jackson Gatlin, native Houstonian and credentialed media member. I'm also the host of Locked on NBA Mondays. I'm also the host of State of the Rockets podcast, as well as the founder of ClutchCityControlRoom.com. Be sure to follow along on Twitter at JT Gatlin. And the show, of course, at Locked on Rockets. Now, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online where the game starts. As always, appreciate you for making Locked on Rockets your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. We're also on YouTube, so go help us out a million times by commenting on YouTube. Go to YouTube, search Locked on Rockets, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Remember the mantra, for the house, for the team, for the algorithm. So go comment on YouTube. Also, if you wouldn't mind, Comment on Apple like podcasts, like the reviews on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, because I think they have reviews now. Uh, those help out a ton too. So I haven't asked for a review over there. But if you like the show, go drop a review. On today's show, we're going to talk about the Rockets adding three, three brand new assistant coaches into the mix under head coach Steven Silas after letting Will Weaver go, letting Desagna Jop go, and then letting uh, Jeff Hornacek go this past offseason. So there have been some question marks about what that assistant coaching staff would look like ultimately for the Houston Rockets. We have our answers now. We'll talk about the three names that they just added to the assistant coaching staff. We'll also take a look at the Rockets Summer League roster, preliminary expectations for that roster, names that kind of stand out. And then we'll also take a look at, hey, the official jersey numbers for Jabari Smith Jr., Tari Eason, and Ty Ty Washington. We'll have that tucked away at the very tail end of the show. But let's start with the three names that the Houston Rockets added to their official coaching staff. Uh, again, reminder, the already you know, highlighted the three names that are no longer part of the coaching staff with the Houston Rockets. Will Weaver, Jeff Hornacek, and Desanga Jop are no longer with the Houston Rockets. Uh, they did still retain, obviously, Steven Silas, still the head coach. John Lucas, still the lead assistant for the Houston Rockets. And then Rick Higgins, still uh, remaining a part of this Houston Rockets staff. He will also be, Rick Higgins will also be the summer league coach for your Houston Rockets in Las Vegas upcoming just a little bit later this week. So it'll be really interesting to see what, what we learn about Rick Higgins as the Vegas summer league coach. Last year, it was really cool to kind of learn about Will Weaver, his style, his, you know, kind of things that he wanted to do. So hopefully we get a bit of a glimpse into Rick Higgins as a coach this go around. <clears throat> Pardon me. So the three names that the Houston Rockets dropped in, Lionel Hollins, <coughs> pardon me, Lionel Hollins, Mahmoud Abdel Fattah, and Mike Batiste. So of those three names, uh, we're going to kind of walk through each one and you know, kind of explain who they are, what they've done, their resume to this point. And no better place to start than the uh, at-home product here for the Houston Rockets. That's Mahmoud Abdel Fattah, the head coach of the G League Vipers, coming fresh off of their championship run with Coach Abdel Fattah. And this is uh, this is something we had kind of pegged as happening for a little while now. This was one of the names that I said, you know, early on, there were a lot of reports that there was interest in the Rockets to uh, promote Abdel Fattah. 
make him an assistant coach this upcoming season. He's had a tremendous amount of success with the RGV Vipers. He's been with them, started as an assistant with them back in the 2018-2019 season. And, you know, he's been the head coach now. He's won championships with them. He's put in a tremendous amount of work with that G League system. And not only that, he's also kind of been, the, the Rockets run their G League team so much differently than, any other G League team in the NBA so much so that it feels as if it's almost like a, you know, like its own NBA team, like its own little ecosystem that they run. And Abdel Fattah has been at the absolute head of that, communicating with, coordinating with the Houston Rockets, with Steven Silas and his previous coaching staff, with the front office, kind of organizing goals and figuring out the template for what they want to achieve down there. And he has actually spanned two different regimes in Houston because he was down there when Mike D'Antoni was also still the head coach of the Houston Rockets. So he's kind of gotten the taste of, you know, a couple different eras of Houston Rockets head coach. And throughout both of these eras, the you know, the mission statement, the ideology, the philosophy for RGV has always stayed the same, which is they mimic everything that the Rockets do at the NBA level. They implement that at the G League level so that there's synergy between these two organizations so that when they bring a player down to RGV or if the Rockets send a player down to RGV, if they're just trying to develop talent at the RGV level, like a guy like Dacian Nix, um, what happens then is there's synergy. Those players have a formal understanding of, okay, this is the system that the Rockets are running. I know that when I get sent up or if I get sent up to their team, I know exactly what I'm, you know, what I'm going to experience, what I'm getting, all that stuff. So Mahmoud Abdel Fada has been at the core of that and at the core of the success of the RGV Vipers for a minute now. And he actually did an exclusive interview with the Athletics' Kelly Eco back in, I think it was April, I believe. And he had this uh, really great, a really great quote kind of talking about uh, who is Coach Mahmoud, right? And first off, you should absolutely go check out the interview. Kelly does a fantastic job whenever he gets to sit down one-on-one with somebody else and, and you know, doesn't no shortage here with Coach Mahmoud Abdel Fattah. This was a great one-on-one -on -one piece, but here's a little piece about, you know, a Coach Abdel Fattah responding and saying who he is as a person, right? He says, I'm going to bring the same thing every single day, the same, the same positivity, the same enthusiasm, and I'm going to put forth my best effort to help guys achieve their goals. Whether guys play or not, I'm going to show them love. I'm going to sit down to watch film with them. I'll get on the floor and work with them. So it's not going to change who I am. When it gets to the floor, it's about letting guys be who they are. I'm going to hold them accountable to the things that Coach Silas does up top. Now, this is referencing what he does, you know, with his time with the Vipers. Although I'm, a, I'm sure that message still stays the same. Uh, sitting on the bench a few seats down from Coach Silas, he's still going to hopefully be able to keep guys accountable for the things that Coach Silas wants them to do. But just making sure guys are on time, guys are being professionals and doing the things that they would do if they were in the Houston locker room, which, hey, he's in the Houston locker room now. So I thought that was a, a cool little tidbit from that article. You should absolutely go check out the rest of the article um, over at The Athletic by Kelly Eco. But I do think this was a great opportunity for the Houston Rockets to kind of see some, you know, quality in their organization, right, to see a talented individual like Coach Mahmoud Abdel Fada and give, them a ch give him a chance at the NBA level on the bench at the, you know, near head coach Steven Silas. As soon as the vacancies started popping up for the Rockets, one of the first names we pointed to was Mahmoud Abdel Fada because it just makes sense to bring him up to the NBA level He's a talented head coach. He's achieved everything he could hope to achieve with the RGV Vipers. He's had a great developmental program down there. He's had players that have come through the Vipers like, I mean, Clint, well, these are just players that have come through the Vipers in general, but Mahmoud Adifada has spent some time with these guys, right? Clint Capella, Robert Covington, Daniel House Jr., Isaiah Hartenstein, Dacian Nix, Josh Christopher has spent time down there. Anthony Lamb has spent time down there. Uh, Armani Brooks has spent time down there. Usman Garuba has spent time down there. Like, he's got kind of prior established relationships with a handful of these guys, and he's played a big part in the development of some of the names that we've become accustomed to as Rockets fans. And I do think that this is maybe an opportunity, you know, this was the organization learning from prior mistakes, right? Nick Nurse being down there with the RGV Vipers and then getting a chance at the NBA level to coach the Raptors and becoming a championship coach seemingly overnight, right? So maybe this is the Rockets realizing that they've got this like farm system available to them with the quality that RGV has 
and they want to make sure that they don't miss out, right? That, that another team doesn't come in and swoop up Coach Abdel Fada, and then they lost out on another possible championship caliber level coach who, you know, just got his time of day with another team, another organization at the NBA level. So maybe that plays a part into it. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to minimize what Coach Abdel Fada has done. In fact, if anything, this emphasizes what he's done, right? He's had so much success with the Vipers that I feel like any NBA team was bound to come swoop him up and at least put him on the bench, if not potentially even offer him a head coaching role. So it'll be really great to see what he actually accomplishes with the Houston Rockets, the role that he ultimately fulfills with this Houston Rockets team. Coming up, I do have two more names that I want to talk about here that the Rockets added to their coaching staff. We're going to get there after a quick message from our friends over at Bet Online because BetOnline.net is your number one source for all of your sports betting needs and info. Find out the latest sports developments and league reviews, including Major League Baseball, UFC, MMA, boxing, golf, you name it, they've got it over at Bet Online. It's your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and more. And speaking of more, right now you can go to Bet Online to see who the odds on favorites are for. NBA Rookie of the Year this following season. Right now, Paolo Bancaro plus 300 leading the way. You got Jabari Smith Jr. right on his tail, though, at plus 375. Chet Holmgren in third place at plus 575. And then rounding out the top five, you got Jaden Ivey at 650, or plus 650, I should say. And then Keegan Murray, a distant fifth at plus 900. So for all of that and more odds, head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action available to you. Bet online. It's where the game starts. And continuing on here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball. Now, let's talk about the other two names that the Houston Rockets have brought on board to Steven Silas's coaching staff. And we'll start with first Lionel Hollins, who I think is actually, you know, as excited as, as I am about the addition of Coach Mahmoud Abdel Fada. I think Lionel Hollins is maybe the most intriguing of the three hires because he's going to be a guy that brings the defensive intensity that I feel like has been sorely missing from this Houston Rockets team, and he's got the defensive pedigree to go along with it. So for those of you unfamiliar with Coach Lionel Hollins, he was the head coach of the Memphis Grizzlies for five seasons during the truly, you know, amazing grit and grind era Memphis Grizzlies that were, you know, every single year one of the top defensive teams in the NBA. Not only that, he was most recently an assistant coach under Frank Vogel when the LA Lakers won their uh, their Mickey Mouse ring, sure. But still, the Lakers were the third best defense in the NBA that season, and they were an incredible defense even before the Disney bubble hit. So, you know, this, this is a coach with pedigree who understands how to have an NBA defense succeed at the highest possible levels. So he's got, you know, the championship pedigree. He's had high levels of success, you know, with leading playoff basketball as a head coach. And the most intriguing part about his hire is Jonathan Fagan noted in his reporting that Lionel Hollins was actually a candidate to be on Steven Silas's coaching staff back in 2016 when the Houston Rockets were debating between hiring Steven Silas and Mike D'Antoni originally. And we all know how that played out. The Rockets ultimately decided to go with head coach Mike D'Antoni and then James Harden became a point guard, and the Houston Rockets entered the, you know, essentially the Mike D'Antoni seven seconds or less seven seconds or less era. Rockets basketball, even though it wasn't quite seven seconds or less era, right? But it was it was the Mike D'Antoni era of Houston Rockets basketball. And, you know, new heights were achieved, right? The the first year with James Harden handling the basketball full time, then the 2017-2018 team that went to game seven against the Warriors. Like, it was a good time to be a Rockets fan. But there was always that, you know, a little bit of that what if. Like, what if the Houston Rockets had gone with Steven Silas four years earlier, right? What if they had gone with him in 2016? What would that have possibly looked like? And this little bit of reporting here is so interesting to me because it shows that not only that there is a prior connection between Steven Silas and Lionel Hollins, because those two gentlemen would have had to have some, you know, some level of relationship, you know, if, if the Rockets were going to bring in Steven Silas and then also wanted to bring in Lionel Hollins, maybe that was an organizational decision. Maybe they're like, Hey, Steven, we really like you. You're our second, you're our runner up. You're our possible candidate, but we're also going to hire your other staff. Cause you know, you're a first time head coach and you know, we, we don't know exactly that, you know, what you're doing quite just yet. We're, we're excited by you, but you know, I don't know how that exactly plays out. I'm going to assume though, that there's got to be some level of connection between or prior connection, I should say, between Steven Silas and Lionel Hollins, that those two gentlemen know each other, that they've wanted to work together before. And the best part is that they know that they balance each other out, right? Steven Silas 
is known for being kind of, you know, he's known for being an offensive genius, right? That's where he's made his bread and butter as a head coach. So to have that, I guess, self-awareness possibly that he needs to kind of anchor his, anchor himself with a defensive-minded, defensive-oriented coach somewhere on his bench to be able to kind of, you know, shoulder things on that side of the basketball is good. And what did we see play out on the other side of things, right? The way the the direction the Rockets actually did go back in 2016. They hired Mike D'Antoni. They also hired Jeff Bezelik, who was in charge of the Rockets' defensive schemes. So the way the Rockets ultimately, like, you know, addressed their issues, right? Having offensive-minded, you know, head coaches is they eventually hired, right? You know, have defensive coordinators, guys, to quarterback the Rockets' defense alongside those guys. And so had the Rockets gone with Steven Siles, right, they were intending to bring in Lionel Hollins. And so this was just a pairing that was kind of ultimately waiting to happen, it seems. And so the Rockets are now in this position. Steven Silas, two years into his you know time coaching the Houston Rockets, needed a little bit of revamp, kind of cleaning out the office and decided, you know, on the assistants that were worth keeping, that were worth sticking around. And that happened to be John Lucas and Rick Higgins. And now you're bringing in a guy like Lionel Hollins who has that defensive acumen, the ability to hopefully really, you know, get guys working on the defensive side of the ball, get guys moving, get guys, you know, hustling on that side of things to be able to, you know, achieve uh, something a little bit more at the NBA level. Because at the end of the day, this Houston Rockets team, while they've got a ton of pieces to be a really good defensive team, they've got a ton of individual talent. Um, they don't have, you know, they don't have established defensive pedigree yet, right? These are all rookies. These are all young guys. So if you can bring in a guy like Lionel Hollins to really establish the tone defensively from day one to continue to build and grow and, you know, mold these guys into high caliber, high IQ defensive players, getting them established to NBA schemes early on, all of that. I'm incredibly excited by this hire. And I don't think this instantly makes the Rockets like a top 15 defense, my projection currently for where this team is going to fall somewhere defensively is I'm hoping they land somewhere between 20 to 25, which would be a, a gigantic improvement from where they were, you know, for the majority of last season at the bottom of the NBA defensive ranks. So somewhere 20 to 25 around the start of the season up until the All-Star break, and then hopefully a notched improvement even further past that. I'm hoping post-All-Star break or roughly second half of the season, they are somewhere in that 15 to 20 bracket, or maybe even a little bit better than that, depending on how things kind of coalesce and come together between this group of rookies and really how talented they are on the defensive side of things. Now, the final name here that the Houston Rockets are adding to their coaching staff, Mike Batiste, Batiste, I apologize, um, uh, who was formerly a Wizards assistant, uh, who also, like Lionel Hollins, played for Arizona State. Uh, he played for the Grizzlies and Clippers. He was also part of three EuroLeague championship teams uh, overseas. And he was also an assistant with the Hornets and Magic after a stint in player development with the Brooklyn Nets while Lionel Hollins was the head coach there. So right after... Uh, Lionel Hollins' stint with the Memphis Grizzlies. He spent two years as the head coach of the Brooklyn Nets, and Mike Batiste was there as an assistant under him. So, you know, it, there there are some connections here. Some, you know, these are guys who have spent some time together who are, you know, aware of each other, who have, you know, again, at least in Lionel Hollins' case and Mike Batiste's case, they've worked together previously. So there, hopefully there's a prior relationship there and they're not just coming in completely blind. But so far, I kind of like these additions to the Houston Rockets coaching staff. You know, while I was still of the names that previously left the Rockets, I was saddest to see Will Weaver go. I thought he had a ton of potential uh, as an assistant coach. I, I think, I mean, this was a guy that was in the running for, uh, head coaching candidacy positions with both the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Chicago Bulls before ultimately they went other directions with their head coaching hires and then he settled on a position as an assistant coach here in Houston. So I was really sad to see him go, unfortunately, but of the names that are being added, I I'm incredibly excited about Co Coach Mahmoud abdel -Fada and Lionel Hollins. Uh, Mike Batiste, I just don't know enough. I don't have enough information on him, right? There's plenty of info on abdel -Fada. There's plenty of evidence and info on 
Lionel Hollins to kind of paint a picture about what the Rockets are getting with those two gentlemen. With Mike Batista, it's not quite the same. So hopefully we learn more a little bit about him uh, over time, about what he's going to bring to the table for the Houston Rockets. But coming up, I do want to talk about the Summer League schedule, or not the schedule release, I should say, I apologize, the Summer League roster release, as well as the Houston Rockets unveiling the official numbers for Jabari Smith Jr., Tari Eason and Ty Ty Washington. We're going to get there after a quick message from our friends over at rockauto.com because look, with the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's basically impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you could possibly need in a local, like in a, in a you know, in a chain store dealership or in a new car dealership, whatever. You can save time and money when you use rockauto.com. Why would you choose, like willingly choose, to spend 30, 50, or even 100% more for the exact same parts from a new store or car dealership? Rock Auto is a family business. They've been serving do-it-yourselfers online for over 20 years. The prices are always reliably low for every single customer. They've got everything you could possibly need from brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even brand new carpet. So go explore their easy-to-use website, check out all the parts, and find the solution to your auto parts needs. And this is a really important part. When you go to check out, when you hit the little shopping cart icon in the top right, be sure to write locked on in their how did you hear about us box so that they know that we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need be sure to visit rockauto.com and final segment here at locked on rockets your daily podcast home for everything houston rockets basketball as always appreciate you making lor your first listen each and every day free and available on all platforms also on youtube go like comment subscribe on youtube all that good stuff let me know how you feel about the three assistant coaching hires by the houston rockets in the youtube comments let me know which one excites you the most i look forward to seeing your feedback but let's talk a little vegas summer league here our very next episode we're going to have five expectations or things to look out for uh, with Vegas Summer League kind of going into the start of Summer League, which starts up this Thursday. It's already here. It's crazy to think how quickly uh, this has changed up on us and the fact that it's right around the corner. But let's take a look at the official Rockets Summer League roster. So some of the names on this list should be pretty familiar. Uh, obviously, Josh Christopher, Tari Eason just drafted, Usman Garuba. Uh, that is not Eric Gordon. It is actually Aaron Gordon. So uh, Eric Gordon's little brother will be playing for the Rockets in Vegas Summer League. Uh, Trevor Hudgens, who is actually the Rockets' uh, two-way signee outside of, the, or just after the NBA draft, is also attending. And, and I do want to talk about him for a moment because he is an absolute sniper. Uh, uh, Anthony Lamb, who should be a familiar name for a lot of Rockets fans. He is the grizzled veteran on this uh, Vegas Summer League squad. And then you got Dacian Nix rounding out the group, as well as Jabari Smith Jr. and Ty Ty Washington for the names that should be familiar to a lot of Houston Rockets fans. Now, of this list, I do want to highlight, first off, the fact that uh, the Rockets have two NBA-caliber players playing with this group, right? Like, Josh Christopher and Usman Garuba are going to absolutely wreck shop with this group. I love that they're participating in Summer League. I know that there was some hope, some anticipation that maybe Alper and Shingun would participate in Summer League as well. Unfortunately, he is not. That would have just been a bloodbath if they had allowed Alper and Shingun to compete with Jacob as well as Uzi plus the Rockets rookies that they're bringing in, like that would have been like the freaking Golden State Warriors, you know, trampling through the rest of the summer league teams. It would have been pretty ugly. So with that, um, I do expect, you know, I, I think that there's a lock for who the who a majority of the starters are going to be. Josh Christopher is going to start. Jabari Smith Jr. is going to start. Usman Garuba is going to start. I think Tari Eason is bound to start, and it'll be really interesting who starts between Dacia Nix and Ty Ty Washington, and that's actually one of our five things to look out for that we'll talk about in our very next episode, so be on the lookout for that. But uh, I do want to highlight Trevor Hudgens here for just a moment because he is out of Northwest Missouri State, played four years there, D2 school, and this kid can shoot. Like, I haven't had a chance to highlight him yet, to spend a segment kind of talking about him. I don't know if he's actually going to, like, make it with the Rockets. He's only six feet tall, right? He's an undersized guard. He's a southpaw, so he plays with his left hand. But this kid can absolutely shoot the ball. Like, I'm going to run through his three-point percentages for all four years that he spent with Missouri State. So... He redshirted his freshman year, so then so then he played four four seasons straight. His freshman year, uh, he or his freshman season, he shot four attempts a game, shot forty six percent from three. Next year, he shot fifty three percent 
from three on six attempts per game. Then his junior year, he shot 51% on five attempts per game from three. And then lastly, his senior year, he shot 40, or well, we're going to round up a skosh. It's four, you know, 415, so we'll round up to 42. He shot 42% from three on 10.3 attempts per game. This kid is lethal with the basketball from behind the arc. It's absolutely absurd. Again, I don't know if he if he actually has an NBA role because he's only six feet tall and you know defensive liabilities probably due to size, all that. And I haven't watched enough of him to know what he truly looks like as a basketball player on both ends of the floor. But he can shoot. He's got deep range too. Like he can pull it from like three, four, five feet behind the three point line with confidence. It's actually kind of absurd. So watching him in Vegas summer league should absolutely be a treat. If anything else. Uh, when the Rockets do start kind of shutting down some of their other players on the roster, like Dacian Nix, like Josh Christopher, like Ty Ty Washington, watching watching Trevor Hudgens just, you know, fire up threes for 30 minutes a night is going to be incredible in the final, like, couple games of Summer League if the Rockets don't allow their, uh, you know, uh, their upper echelon prospects to play all five games in Summer League. So that's going to be a ton of fun. Wanted to highlight that. Uh, that's, that's the official roster there for you. Uh, if you're watching visually via YouTube, I'm not going to run through all the other names on this roster. Uh, we'll, we'll see them in action. Once we get to Vegas summer league, I just wanted to highlight the official names that are on the actual roster that Rockets fans should be familiar with, as well as the fun Easter egg names like Aaron Gordon. So with that, uh, final thing here, let's talk about the Jersey numbers, that have been officially released for the three new rookies coming into the fold for the Houston Rockets. So we'll start with uh, we'll start from the back and work ourselves forward. So let's start with Ty Ty Washington settled on jersey number zero. I was so torn and so close to electing jersey number zero as one of my possibilities when I was predicting the jersey numbers. Ultimately, he's worn three all through high school, all through college. And so I settled on 33 since three wasn't available. Uh, but I was this close to adding zero as like my like backup choice for his jersey number since we knew that Jalen Green would be moving on from zero and then switching to jersey number four, which has also been made official by the Rockets' uh, official social media accounts. They posted a photoshopped video of Jalen going up for a dunk. You can see the number zero, and then it gets you know changed midair to the number four. They said JG4 is here, so that is official now. JG0 is gone. It was a nice little one-off in his room year. So if you have a Jalen Green jersey with the zero on it, that's going to become a collector's edition item in the not so distant future. It's time to go buy a JG4 jersey now. Uh, with that, Tari Eason, who was pick number 17, decided to go with jersey number 17. And 17 is a jersey that has held uh, a lot of Rockets that a lot of Rockets fans have held near and dear to their heart with a lot of fan favorites playing uh, with that jersey number 17. Obviously, Mario Ellie, the one who made it famous, and then P.J. Tucker also rocking jersey number 17 for a stint there with the Houston Rockets. So a couple of premier Rockets defensive players, uh, fan favorites. Hopefully, Tari Eason follows in those exact same footsteps. And then shout out also to Ty Ty Washington for selecting jersey number zero, another jersey that has some ties to a Rockets fan favorite. Specifically, we're going to go with Aaron Brooks here. Uh, at least Aaron Brooks is the first Rockets Rockets player that I think of when I think of number zero. Although I do believe I want to make sure I got this right. Um, uh, nope, not what I want. And this is terrible show prep. I should have done this. You can hear the click clacking of my keyboard. Um, that's not what I want. Let's do this. Um, no. So I thought, dang, for a second, I thought Scotty Brooks wore number zero. He wore number one. I wanted to, I wanted to make sure I had that right, but um, we'll go with Aaron Brooks, right? He's, he's the fan favorite that I think of when I think number zero for the Houston Rockets. And then lastly here, we got Jabari Smith Jr., the only one that I got correct, and that is with Eric Gordon still on the roster, occupying number 10 that Jabari Smith Jr. normally wears. Air, you know, he decided to go with number one, and that was the one that made a ton of sense to me, right? You ch you chop the zero off, you just go with jersey number one, and not only that, did it make the cleanest transition from 10 to one, 
It also made a ton of sense because this is a kid who has an absolutely massive chip on his shoulder, right? He feels like he should have gone number one overall. He feels like he's the best player in the draft that he should have been drafted ahead of Paolo Bancaro, ahead of Chet Holmgren. So what better way to illustrate that than to rock jersey number one and go out there and show up and show out in front of the rest of your peers, the NBA, and prove those other team ro- other teams wrong. So I'm glad I at least got that one right because I called uh, I called 30. 31 for Tari Eason, and I called 33 for Ty Ty Washington were my official bets, and I was completely off base on both of those. So I'm glad to have at least gone one for three. I wonder how you did. Let me know in the YouTube comments how well you did with your predictions. Did you get any of them right? Did you Were you wrong on all, all three of them? Let me know as well as how you feel about the Rockets assistant coaching staff additions and how excited you are for Vegas Summer League. But and that's going to do it for today's episode. If you haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing wherever you listen to your podcast. That's Apple, Spotify, Google, the Odyssey app, free and available on all platforms. Also, I've said it a couple times already, but check us out on YouTube. Go to YouTube, search Locked on Rockets, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. And we look forward to having you back right here at Locked on Rockets, your daily podcast home for everything Houston Rockets basketball.